Live from Nairobi City, this is your host, Simriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. They have traveled a journey of many tasks. They have overcome numerous challenges and they have displayed the very best of leadership. And tonight, we gather ultimately to find out how Kenya has voted. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the big night. This is the 2013 Uongozi Season 1 Grand Finale, coming to you live from Nairobi City. I'm your host, Smriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. Tonight, we are joined by, among others, Mr. John Gidongo, the CEO of Inuka Kenya. Mr. Linus Gitahi, the CEO of the Nation Media Group. Dignitaries from various countries, Uongozi judges, and of course, Uongozi fans. Now, with auditions conducted countrywide, eight men and eight women, all very deserving, beat 12,000 other applicants to compete in Uongozi. And it's been a tough series full of choices, dilemmas, and hard decisions. Let's take a look. The 16 contestants that made it are from Oloi Tok Tok, Kazia Khadija from Taita Taveta County, Solomon Mulera from Mombasa County, Felipe Saja from Machakos County, and Herman Muraguri from Nairobi County. From Garissa, Enoch Miner from Garissa County, Zainab Wario from Isiolo County, Elizabeth Duya from Lamu County, and Aidan Mohammed from Mandera County. From Kisi, Jennifer Roby Chacha from Migo. County, Evelyn Gakinya from Laikipia County, Rose Nyasuguta from Kisi County, and Raymond Ocheng from Kisumu County. From Kitale, James Lepurok from Turkana County, Joram Omondi from Siaya County, Hadlin Lusui from Nandi County, and Eunice Songa from the Diaspora. Throughout the show, the contestants were subjected to tasks to test their leadership skills. All, all of us, the two teams, were supposed to go and want to have been made up. Everyone has understood there's no need to keep repeating. No, but see, now people have understood there's no need to keep repeating. I will prefer it and everyone talk for themselves, my dear. No, is that okay? Wakina Ada Banar. I mean, there's a t-shirt, they are very beautiful t-shirts. These are ground nuts and these are paper fans. Why should someone help your wife and you are there as a husband? Let be realistic. I think you were leading from in front, but from a position of lying down. You should ask if anybody feels like I'm talking sense. Okay, I'm the the I request that you move with the group members. The leader was the most challenging to deal with. You can see clearly this is what I got. This person had to just move away from this person. You know, so moving away. Yeah. Well, it's Anna. Na maandishi ya tokee vile natakiwa itokee ndiweze kupatikana katika kukiangalia. Didn't hold your team together. 
tusha strike Adele na mtu ukinuangua ukipata tena prize chipa hapo mbele unaivua unaanza kupelekea unasema ati nimepata prize nzuri nuno okay fine sort the community and sort the lord simple tumalize deal did you or did you not contravene rule number 6 which talks about giving rewards or incentives to the community we will eat all we want we can't condone illegal groupings mimi ninasema hivi kwa wazalendo kupitia kwako kura yangu hauipati i think this crowd just voted like the kenyan way mnataka nini kwanza ndio tuanzie hapa kama wewe mbe yako lazima wewe tu na nini nachoweza kumbia ni sorry vumilia na wewe utashinda kwani matiso yanapita mostly she deals with the wooden artifacts sorry sorry see what people are doing and it gives you a true face of working kenya the objective of our proposal is to broaden masai market business Uh, let me show you one that probably you did not see. This is a, a sandal. Does it make sense to me? What part does it make sense? The whole thing. So you lied that you you're a student at America Intercontinental University. Um, I don't think if that was a lie. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me know. <laughs> Due to the intense nature of the competition, 13 were eliminated and one withdrew from the show. The person going home today, Jennifer Raymond Evelyn Enoch Kazia Elizabeth James Zaina Hardlin Joram Eunice. You may leave the situation room. Well, evidently quite a journey right there. Now, these are the men and women who faced off in this leadership contest that is a first of its kind in Kenya. They gave their best performance in all the weekly tasks and each week they had to face the judges to account for their individual contribution to each of those tasks. But away from the tasks they always presented a united front while in the situation room and repeated time and time again that even though it was a contest the spirit of one family came first but there came special moments when they had to say something away from others so was this spirit of oneness consistent let's find out Leo, Leo, Leo. Enoch, for lack of a better word, I say he's a loud mouth. Who am I glad left? <laughs> uh, to be honest, Kizia. Yeah. Eden and uh, Kizia, they were really like uh, acting like parrots. Yeah, people to watch out for for conflict would be again Kizia and maybe Zainab since they haven't worked very much together. We already know Kizia and how to handle her, let's say. From my own point of view, I believe one of our team member by the name of Eunice brought all this. Again, you know, it's always good to give people chance. Yeah? You don't just assume people because you have a very strong personality and you look down upon others. I'm glad that uh, I'm joined by Jerome. Uh, I think he's a he's, he's, he's quite somebody. I think he can be able to help the team pull it off. At a certain point, Enoch did not really uh, find where people are moving towards he did not see exactly uh, where people are moving towards most of the times he would ask what guys had passed and get back to that so i think that uh, assassinated uh, his presence he okay, leave the room for a few minutes and then you come back okay yeah uh, i wasn't kicked out there was need for consultation i couldn't keep up with his answers because i was reading one thing and he was telling me another thing making um, i mean a judgment on the basis of of what you have that in this particular place you started with the this other one you are starting with a so i feel it is inconsistent for me uh, that is too kind of uh, uh, for lack of words that is too petty but he was now becoming very careful and guarded because i was actually asking the comparing what with what he wrote and what he was telling me the worst part that i didn't like is the idea of telling me that you are not going i'm i'm seeing you are not going to win this competition 
I think that was sensational and needs an apology. We want to change leaders, but you are seeing people who are even trying to bribe other people outside there by buying them water. They are being left. So you wonder what kind of leadership is this we're looking about? Or what kind of ongoes is this you're talking about? Leo! All right, some candid behind-the-scenes revelations there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's appreciate the former contestants. And now to our first performance of the night, a top-notch six-piece Afropop band. They have performed on various international stages. They are no doubt one of the most sought-after bands in Kenya. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only, the hilarious Ma3 Band. Sukuma wiki mkononi kakota na maziwa leo sukari sinunui kwani hela hizo ndizo za kulipia kodi na maji ya mtungi sijui leo tapata wapi viatu vimeisha Maraundi round is a muthurwa Kuhuza pere mende na mabui unjugu karanga Senti ntakazo pata Siku chacheta ni sukuma Takaza mwendo Siku moja Nege ni tapanda Siku moja Gari ntanunua Siku moja Viatu vitangaya Kumoja, nege ni tapanda si kumoja, gari ntanunua si kumoja, via tuvitangaya. Nitafika. Well, thank you to the Mathri Band for that energetic performance. We're taking a short break now, but remember... 
they've beaten 12,000 applicants and 14 other contestants to become the Uongozi final two. And they've been tested by tough leadership challenges. And Kenya has already cast its vote. Who will become the ultimate leader? All that after the break. Leo, 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 Leo. This is the Uongozi grand finale coming to you live from Nairobi. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. Now, they have earned their places tonight. They have displayed the very best of their leadership potential. And now, Kenya's verdict awaits them. These are the highlights of the final two. Is it possible that you can tell us what you're passionate about and then tell us about the problems in Mandera? and talk like you have life. The first start in Mandera County is to, to start civic education, civic education itself. For Mandera, we have Adan Abdallah. Even if you are a rapist, you are a drunkard, you are a terrorist, in front of justice, everyone is equal. Uh, the honorable driver showed us a driving license. He's not David Maina, this one. If there's David, another David Maina, yes, it should be that, that one. Ah, ah, what are you doing? Let's cool, let's cool, let's cool, let's cool for a moment. Let's cool, eh? let's cool for a moment. If everyone clean a space in front of their, their shop or their, their, their house, you doing your part, her doing her part, him doing his part, our environment will be clean. In fact, after telling them so... And you think they don't know that already? <laughs> Our, our kettles are starving and there are lots of grass yes. here, Bala. For mantles eh? and the baboons. <laughs> For baboons. <laughs> our cover every, every now and then our kettles are dying. Right. It's not necessarily copy-paste, but information on, 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 on Monday. It's copy-paste you know, that you did, actually, Yeah. from many websites, like three or four of them, actually. It's not you alone who ordered the paper. Why didn't you acknowledge the people? <laughs> <laughs> But she doesn't know that you can't do it. She can't see the way So I think it's upon us to decide not to split into two because it's a written. Yeah, let's take Matatu. We have money to pay. This is Renewe. To Taweka. Toll free line. Toll free line to my office as your secretary. Toll free line. We're going with the numbers. So the time's not up. Let's move on and mobilize the community. These are ground nuts and these are paper funds. A paper funds we are selling at 500 shillings or more according to your philanthropy. Your quota, na peleka haki. Na unesema uko kware nini ni riski. Sasa munataka nini kwanza ndiyo tuwanzi hapa. Kama wewe mbe yako lazima wewe juu. Kwa nini? Kuna mjapanese, wezi muzia kama American. Kama American anajua? Dollar. Dollar, dollar. The water will be sold at lower price. The farm produce will be, will be sold at lower price. So, in fact, this is a project to beat in, in, in Mandera. <sighs> Been in the last two, Allahu Akbar. One of your greatest fears, you said, was if others succeed in places where you have not tried. Okay, first this has hounded me so much because I'm 24 at the moment. My passion is writing. I write poetry. I also write short stories. I tried writing a novel, but I never went through. Okay, well, the problem is a question has been skipped. Okay, one minute is already gone, gentlemen. Let us move on. We have Solomon.
the objective is to raise as much money as possible. Okay, we have given the mandate as a team leader. Let's make a decision and let him be binding. Because you can't go in circles. Talking about these things on and on, let us come with a plan. So that's the plan that I have here. Sorry. I mean, please. Okay, let's look at the introduction. Yeah. Let us look at the people. Yeah. You should ask if anybody feels like I'm talking sense. Okay, I'm the chair, sense the the guys, let, let me say, you've already given them the idea of money. No, no, no. They should never have known even the issue of 8K. Yeah. Yeah. We are first supposed to understand this market yeah. and sell the idea. The moment you walk into a Maasai market, I'm sure you'll meet people from all walks of life. But it is not these people that give you the feel. It is actually the artifacts. And these artifacts are the brain children of the artisans. I expect to see a Simba, a Chewy, <laughs> and a giraffe. Hallelujah to my Lord God, my Redeemer, my Sebo. You're 24 year old. Yeah. Uh, single. Single. Never married. Never married. Never divorced. Never divorced. And you want to go and help single women. Exactly. Why, why not target men and you're a man? We had some of the smartest people here, guys with degrees, guys who've done much in society. But I believe that this is a point for me to, to perhaps have an opportunity in the leadership of this country. Leo! Evidently an interesting, humorous and at times emotional journey. But tonight, only one of them, Solomon or Aiden, will walk away with the hefty prize in a short while. Let's have a look at that package. Winner of Uongozi will get a six-month leadership prize, which will include an all-expenses-paid trip to experience six leadership and governance institutes across four continents, Asia, Africa, Europe, and North America. A total of 1.2 million shillings stipend over the six-month period and a 3 million shillings grant to implement a public project of their choice. Well, while the contestants fought hard to clinch the prize, there are three people who stood in their way, other than the task themselves, and these are the judges. Now, the judges are the people who were put in, you could say, the most difficult position of following each group of contestants for the duration of the entire task and having to determine which of these contestants should be saved to continue in the competition. Take a look. This show has been presided over by three judges, Mumbi Kaigwa, Tom Boya, and Mueni Lundi. From time to time, there has also been a guest judge. Leo! Leo and the judges had their perspectives on things. The way I'm feeling about the, how the task was done, I'd send both teams home. Yeah, I, I get the sense that they're a bit concerned about getting the 25 people together that will allow them to begin the task. There's been very little conversation about it being for free. And in Kenyan culture, often when you're registering your name, it means that there's a reason. And it's usually a financial or a financial gain or a meal or something. And I'm wondering whether they would be able to develop that proposal or that presentation with the information that they got. I think they assumed that uh, every task would be, uh, would be political in nature. I'm really looking forward to this particular task with a lot of glee. And you're leaving all of that grimy black slime and disgusting uh, mess on the side of the road. This in the document. Uh, but when John came, I asked John. Please Jeff. stop. Well, um, that was uh, just a, a diagram sketch. <laughs> You're sure. still smiling, oh, Joram. You know why. It's a diagram <laughs> sketch of what exactly? Is <laughs> Team leader, is that true? Oh, that's true. Mm -hmm. 
and without confusion, is that true that there was no presentation to give to the designer from the team? Yeah, there was no printed uh, presentation to be presented to the designer. There was no concept developed yeah. to present yeah. to the designer. I think they used to call them secretaries in the more sexist years. A junior role. Did I play that role? Because I thought I... Eunice. When I was Eunice. Speaking, spoken to Eunice. You. Yes. Realistic would be doing some research. You're coming in with your wings like an angel and you know and you're deciding what it is people need and you're deciding what it is people want and, and what's best and what's best for them and it's very colonial he lacked the requisite seriousness when he suggests that here is a shield that an ambassador can take and use to protect himself from stones mm -hmm. i'm good with those two okay. seeing I'm as we can't send things. everyone home. i think they just need only to because we can't send everybody home. yes only and i think we need to tell them that because oh this was such a shoddy they job <gasps> Well, I really don't know which of the three was the nicer judge, but uh, either way, ladies and gentlemen, let's give them all a round of applause. That is Tom Boya, Mweni Lundi, and Mumbi Kaigwa. All right, well, now let's turn our attention to the Uongozi final two. They have waited for this day with bated breath, and this is certainly the biggest night of the year for them, and they are now making their way here. At least that's what I'm told. Let's just confirm if indeed they are. fancy style. Well, they certainly are, and in some style. They will be joining us in just a moment, but first, a short break. Welcome back. You're watching the Uongozi Season 1 Grand Finale. We're live from Nairobi City. I'm your host, Smriti Vidyarthi Mohendra. And now I am told that our finalists are all set and ready to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, here come the Uongozi Final 2.
Ladies and gentlemen, they're in the house. Let's give it up for Aidan Muhammad and Solomon Wanyama. Welcome. Welcome. Gentlemen, it is so great to have you here. Welcome to the stage. Now, you've both been a part of Uongozi for almost two months, and tonight is the big night. We're live here in front of an audience, and tonight, one of you will be revealed the winner. Aidan, how do you feel? I feel humbled, overwhelmed by the support people gave me. I'm proud of this moment, to say the least. Solomon, what does this mean for you? It's a happy moment for me, but at the same time, a humbling experience. Yeah. All right, all the best to both of you. Now, Solomon, let me start with you. As part of the Ongozi team, you took part in a number of tasks. Out of those, which one was your favorite? My favorite task was the political rally because I love talking to people. When I get them convinced about my ideas and listening to them, it really makes me happy. All right, let's have a look at it. Okay. The problem is national cohesion. And to me, to solve this problem, it's education. And why do I say education? Yoram means so nice when it comes to Swahili. Oh, yeah, compared to Unis. Let me introduce the, sec the Secretary of the Ministry of National Cohesion, Mr. Solomon Wanyama. Kenya Moja. Vijano Nzangu, Wananjo Nzangu. Leo Ngependa. Asacheni Sana. As Kenya Moja. We endeavor to start by planting the seed of harmony in the minds of our children. And we shall do this by inculcating the message of peace, the message of harmony, and the message of love in the minds of our children. Right from the start, at the age of five years old, the moment they step into our classrooms, primary school, secondary school, and even into the universities. Never again should our country suffer. Never again should we fight just because we do not understand that this country called Kenya is made up of 42 tribes plus other people who have found it favorable to stay with us. Kenya Moja! Kenya Moja! I enjoyed it. It was good. This, this was my first time speaking to the public, but it felt so nice. Kenya Moja Party received 170 votes. Congratulations to the Kenya Moja Party. Solomon, you are so passionate and full of emotion and so confident too. How challenging was it to address such a rally, especially on an issue such as politics? It was challenging, first of all, to start a conversation because the people wanted us to start by speaking in Swahili. But you realize that in the common rooms, all our preparations were in English. So first we had to, to convince the people to listen to us. So that is the challenge. But then speaking of the issues of cohesion, these are issues that touch our society, and that's why I was so passionate about it, and I really wanted the people to get the message. Yeah. Do you think that the crowd believed you on your issues, and if so, why? I think the crowd believed in my issues because they were clapping, they were happy about it. And why? Because these are issues that affect them. It doesn't take a... You don't need to like, be a rocket scientist to understand that people need to be united to come together in order to build a society. Yeah. Okay, Solomon, thank you very much. Thanks. Now, Aidan, out of all the tasks, what stood out for you? A fundraising for IDPs. Okay, let's have a look at that. One thing um, I know is accepted in any market, Of course. What um, 
foreseen, probably it could be a good day to buy lots of paper punches. But we have to strategize lots on, on, on paper punches. As you chew your groundnut, it reminds you, as you chew one by one, my fellow is in, in, in call. So we thought it's a worthy cause. It's indeed the, the responsibility of the government to, to take these guys out, out of IDP camp. We explained to them that it's I. It starts with me, it starts with him and, 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 and the person. We can't wait for government to solve all our problems. We are capable, we are philanthropic, we are capable of solving our problems. So we felt it's a worthy, it's a worthy uh, fundraising. This is going for 500 or more, and we are also sharing in Jubus. So according to how we talked on the, on the phone, I played you on the other side. Eh? Yeah, we were right, one pair of punch and five ground nuts. Everyone did their best to, to sell the items. It's shown because, as you already said, we finished before our stipulated time. That means everyone put their 100% effort, and I think as per that task, everyone did their best. And your cash proceeds were 37,200. Aiden, you had to sell nuts and paper punches to raise money for IDPs. Why was that your favorite task? Because to help fellow human being is not about some, it's not about you, but it's what we all inculcate into ourselves. The issue, IDPs have been in the camp for the last five years. They're still there. We have leaders out there. I thought when we come as Kenyans together, organize ourselves. We are capable of taking those IDPs out of camp. As you know, nuts goes for 10 shillings. But we sold to the Kenyan public, not only to Kenyans, to everyone at 200 shillings. <laughs> right, and you were very convincing in selling nuts, which you can probably get for 10 shillings, for 200 shillings. How hard was that? It wasn't hard. The story behind what we are raising was sold to the public. The public weren't buying nuts and, and paper punches. They're buying the story. It shows Kenyans are bitter about IDPs. What happened in 2007, 2008 elections? So in, in short, Kenyans were saying, we don't want to go back to that moment. That's the past, and I hope Kenyans ha have learned from it. Okay, and just very briefly, Aidan, uh, we all heard you say, as you chew your nuts one by one, why one by one? Yeah. <laughs> nuts, you know, it's, it's only... It's Something to do with the flavor? Not, not the flavor. <laughs> there are many, when you put it to your hands, as you chew, you can take that, that bit and walk for very, many distance. As you chew, you think about IDPs in the camp. That's, right. that's the story. That's all right, well, <laughs> thank you. I'm sure, Aidan, the next time that we all buy a packet of nuts, we'll try that too. Thank you, gentlemen. Please take your seats for now. And now, at this point, it is my pleasure to invite the CEO of the Nation Media Group to make a few remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all welcome Mr. Linus Gitahi. Hi. Uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a famous West African author in a preamble to his book said, there is nothing wrong with Africa. There is nothing wrong with the air we breathe. There is nothing wrong with the, the lard. There is nothing wrong with the soils. There is really nothing wrong with Africa. In fact, there is everything right about Africa. What is wrong? so far has been the kind of leadership that Africa has found itself with. But ladies and gentlemen, I do not know about you, but as I watched this program, I was very encouraged. Finally, I saw that within us lies great potential for leadership. That within us 
lies world class people who actually can take this country, can take this continent uh, to the next level. And in actual fact, my tribute actually goes to all the contestants that I saw. I saw people who are selfless. I saw people who are transparent. I saw people who are rolling up their sleeves to serve. And that was the intention. And even today as we celebrate these two young people, and as we get a winner out of them, I am very encouraged that all the people I saw gives me hope that as Kenya prepares for takeoff towards Vision 2030, uh, we really do have men and women out there who are willing to, to lead at the local, at the country, county, and even at the county level. And the, the point really is, as we also go to the elections, I hope this program has in its own way communicated that there is need for us to think a little about the kind of leaders that we want to have. That there is need for us to really think not so much about what the Pharaoh is saying who wants to be a leader. In fact, someone once said, what you do, speak so loud, I don't hear what you say. And what these ladies and gentlemen who are contesting, what they were doing is what made them, what they were doing and even what they were saying is what was separating them until we got to these two. And I think it was a big lesson for all of us Kenyans that there is opportunity for us to sit back and reflect about who it is we want to lead us at the local, at the county, and at the national level. And the values that I, this program brought out, I want to commend them and say, maybe they are the things that we should look for. And I'm every reason to believe, and I'm very, very confident that if we do that, this country is going to move far. This country is going to be a force to reckon with. If only we could invest in the right people. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And I hope you're enjoying the show. Thank you. Linus Gitahi there, CEO of the Nation Media Group. Thanks very much indeed. We're taking a short break now, but when we come back, we find out who between Aidan and Solomon walks away with the grand prize tonight. Stay tuned. <laughs>
We are live from the capital and this is the Ongozi season one grand finale. Welcome back. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. And now I would like to put a question to the judges at this moment in time. Both Solomon and Aidan had their moment. Let me turn to Tom first. Good evening, Tom. Good evening. Now, as a judge, we saw you earlier, some harsh comments coming your way, or rather from you. What, for you, was one of the major challenges being a judge? One of the major challenges was uh, the fact that, you know, we followed uh, the contestants around for a significant amount of time. Uh, literally all day, every day, sometimes six, seven days a week. And so you get to know them very well. Uh, and at some point, we get to a situation where the three of us had to sit down and decide who was going to go home and why. Uh, it's difficult not to be emotionally attached to uh, somebody who you thought has done well, somebody who you thought, you know what, this is just a good person. Uh, this is a person who has led within their own community and, and is destined to lead uh, within this country as well. Uh, so it became difficult to make those decisions, particularly as the competition got into the latter stages. Okay, thanks, Tom. Now, Moeni, I'm told that you were the harshest judge. Why do you think that is? I was the nicest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, my mother actually told me the same thing, and I was thinking, oh, okay. There you go, and your mother's always right, right? Yes. <laughs> so you were. But I, I think, and, and uh, we discussed this with the judges, I'm impatient for change for this country. Uh, I, I can't keep being told, no, change is coming. We basically just have to grab it by the neck. And so that means we have to be doing something about it. I want something better and I want it now. So we can't wait to be political leaders. We can't wait to be other things. It's in what we are doing now that we're going to change this country. And I guess that's why I wanted that uh, to get across to the participants. You cannot do a shoddy job now, hoping that you'll do a better job tomorrow. It starts now. So, well, okay, yeah, I was impatient. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Now, Mumbi, do you have any regrets as to some of the decisions you made? And these two gentlemen, are they rightly placed to be the final two? Absolutely. I think that they're um, really committed when they get into a task. And it was very clear even as we were watching the, the clips on uh, what has happened since the beginning. When they... When they uh, take on a task, they take it on 105%. And there, was, um, there were times when we would dispute when people said that I would, did my best and I was kind of, you know, sort of asking people what best was. And, um, and I think that these two gentlemen definitely did their best. And I, it's really sad to think that only one person can get to win. But I, for me, they're both winners. All right. Thanks very much to all three of you for your contribution. Thank you. And now, at this point in time, allow me to invite Mr. John Gidongo, who was also one of the judges at one point. He is the CEO of Inuka Kenya, and he will join us to give us a few remarks. Your Excellencies, Viewers, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to Ongozi. The journey that has brought all of us who have had the privilege of participating in it until this stage has been a humble one. It has demonstrated the very best of Kenya to ourselves. Though we merge with a winner today, in truth, this process has not had real losers. We have all been winners starting with extraordinary participants who made it to the final stage of what was initially a group of over 12,000 applicants. We have seen the best of Kenya in terms of humility, innovation, a sense of humor, resilience, perseverance, and a capacity for work. I can't but congratulate and thank all the contestants for this project, for stepping up to the challenge and doing so with open hearts and determined commitment. In a country where too often it feels as if these qualities are woefully lacking in our leaders, in our Viongozi, it has been both heartening and uplifting to be part of this Wongozi process until this stage that reaffirms to us as Kenyans that we have what it takes to lead not only ourselves, 
but this country to great heights we all believe that we are capable of. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. John Gidongo, CEO of Inuka Kenya. And now, in a few moments, Kenya's decision will be revealed and all the anxiety quenched once and for all. But first, performing the Uongozi theme song, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Mr. Lenny and Mathri. Mr. Lenny and Mathuri, thank you very much for that. And of course, true to the words of that theme song, today is that appointed day for Kenya to unveil a redefined leader, the leader Kenya has been longing to have. The much-awaited moment is here. We started with 16 contestants. Now we're down to two, and the results are in. 
But first, Dr. Mo Ibrahim, the founder of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation that runs the annual Africa Leadership Award, was to join us tonight, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. He did, however, send his message, and now I would like to invite Grace Guyati, one of the 240 shortlisted candidates who traveled for three days from Masabit to Garissa for the auditions. And while she was not among the final four from Garissa, her determination to participate in the search for Kenya's next leader left a lasting impact on the judges and fellow contestants. Let's welcome Grace to deliver Dr. Mo Ibrahim's speech. Message. message from Dr. Mo Ibrahim. Leaders and leadership matters because they affect all of us and determine our future. The post-colonial history of the African demonstrates clearly how failures of leadership have led to the situation our continent is in. Ethical, responsible, Leadership is essential for our development, and it is up to the next generation not to repeat the mistake of their parents. I congratulate Wongosi for highlighting this critical issue and all the contestants for rising to, the, to this challenge. Peaceful and transparent election. Thank you. Grace, thank you very much for delivering that speech on behalf of Mo Ibrahim. At this point, I would like to ask Solomon and Aidan to please stand up and come stand beside me. Gentlemen, make your way here while I also invite back Mr. John Gidongo onto the stage to deliver the results. And also, please, may the KPMG representative Bernadette also join us. She has the results and will pass them on to Mr. John Gidongo. Bernadette, do you confirm that those are the true results of the Uongozi final and that they have been verified? Yes, I confirm that these are the true results and they have been verified. Please pass them on to Mr. Gidongo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the moment we have been waiting for. Remember, this contest has continued for just under two months. Gentlemen, this is the moment of truth. I would now like to request Mr. John Gidongo to reveal who the winner of the Uongozi season one is. The winner of Uongozi season one is Adam. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, a hard-earned victory and a well-deserved win. Aidan, congratulations. Mr. Gidongo, please do give him that award. Congratulations. Congratulations, Aidan. Aiden, before you give your victory speech, 
How do you feel? Being trusted by all these people, I don't know how we live this trust and confidence. So a big burden on my shoulder, I won't let you down. Aiden. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, ladies and gentlemen, I have no words, but allow me to thank Almighty God for this wonderful award. Allow me to thank my family members, some of them who are here, my friends. Your support has been unwavering. My mom and dad, I know you are watching this show on, on TV. You are proud parents, and I love you so much. My wife, Rahma, who is here, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for looking after our beautiful children when I was away. Allow me, allow me to thank the creators of Wongozi, all Wongozi team members, my fellow contestants, and everyone who've made Wongozi a success. Please join me in dedicating this award to orphans in our society. Fellow Kenyans, viewers, everyone who voted for me, you've put all your confidence in me. I can assure you that I shall not let you down. Thank you very much. May God bless you. May God bless Kenya. Well, that is how we crown Uongozi Season 1. Congratulations once again to Aidan Mohammed and of course to Solomon for being a great, great participant. Thank you to the entire Uongozi cast. And to the production team and of course to all of you at home for watching. Leadership is indeed changing. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. Until next time, good night. Congratulations, Solomon. Well done. Great audience, and thank you for participating in the Uongozi Grand Finale. And we'd like to invite you to a cocktail that's taking place just outside the reception. So please feel free to make your way there. Thank you.
just a quick note. Sorry, everybody. Just a quick note. Just to uh, let you know that, of course, this was a competition in competitions, there's always one major winner, but I'd just like to inform you that although Aidan is getting an incredible prize, Solomon too will get the chance to experience leadership courses across Africa, and I think he deserves a big round of applause as well.